Hi everyone, it's Sue Plum here to share another scrapbook process video with you. Today's layout that I am sharing was created for the Coco Vanilla Studio design team and I am scrap lifting. Now you can see that beautiful layout there on the screen which was created by Sophie Delamay and I have to admit I have a massive scrappy crush on Sophie's work. So I was a little bit intimidated when I was tasked with scrap lifting her. Uh, partly because I simply couldn't choose which one of her layouts I wanted to lift and partly because I was very worried about doing Sophie's work justice. So I chose that beautiful um, layout that she created cr using the These Days collection, which was from a few months ago. And I have to admit that the clincher that made me choose this layout was all the beautiful butterflies. Now, if you know me and you know my work, you know that I absolutely love butterflies and I'll take any excuse to use them on a page. So that was probably the factor that tipped me over the edge to choose this one because it gave me an excuse to use lots of butterflies on a page. Now, my all-time favourite Coco Vanilla Studio butterflies came from the Happiness Collection. So I decided to pull out this collection, which was from a few years ago, and bust through some of my very treasured scraps of this range. So I do have a few 12 by 12 papers still intact, and I have some 6 by 8 papers. I have very little ephemera left and I think I have some of the die cut titles left but I'm going to have to start mixing it up with some other ranges I think. Anyway on to the layout. So I am scrapping a photo of my gorgeous daughter there and one of the reasons I really did want to scrap my daughter on my layout was because Sophie had scrapped a photo of Sabrina, her daughter, on her layout. And our daughters are very, very close in age. So I thought that would be a really nice nod to Sophie's work that if we had both scrapped photos of our gorgeous girls. So now the way Sophie had structured her layout is she had a a piece of pattern paper at the bottom that she had put a tear into. She'd torn a, torn a little bit out of it. And she had fo um, flowers spilling out of the tear in the paper. And they sort of wound their way up around her photo. And then she had the, the cluster of butterflies at the top of the page. Now, one of the other elements that she did have was she had a row of um, a horizontal row across the middle of the page that she created using pocket cards. Now, the Happiness Collection did not come with pocket cards, so I substituted in the pocket cards for some pattern paper. And you can see that one, that piece that I've got there with the two large butterflies on it that says, Hello Beautiful, that I'm going to use as my title card came from the cut apart paper from this range. Now you can see the piece that I have used down the bottom there. You can see I've put that tear into the paper. Now Sophie actually stitched hers back. She The little flaps of paper, she folded them back and she, she stitched them down. But I am not much of a stitcher. <laughs> So I grabbed my tiny attacher instead and just added some staples to hold the paper in place. Now, the thing that I did on this page that Sophie did not do on hers was I actually added that dark border around the page and that paper, that beautiful indigo, navy, whatever you want to call it, it's kind of in between the two. Uh, paper is one of my all-time favorites. I adore the color of this paper and given that my daughter was standing in front of that dark brick background, I knew I needed to bring some darkness into this page but I didn't want to make it too dark like in the focal area of the page so I decided to put that dark border around the page just to help draw some of that darkness in. 
Now you can see I have, so I've stuck down that torn paper along the bottom edge there. I've also got my row of papers going across the middle there, just like Sophie did. Uh, I've got my, my photo. Now you can see that I am positioning my photo. I've actually mirrored Sophie's layout a little bit and I'm going to tell you why. When you look at Sophie's layout, you can see that Sabrina is sort of standing on the left side of the photo and she's looking in towards the, the right. Whereas in my photo there of Brielle, she is standing on the right and she's looking into the left. Now, when you do put photos on your page, what you want to do is look where the subject's eyes are looking, look at the way that their body is positioned. Now, the way that Brielle is positioned there, I wouldn't have wanted to put her over on the left side of the page because that would place her looking off the edge of the page and into space. So that's a little tip, pro tip from me. Uh, when you are looking at positioning your photos, if you can, if you can see the way your subject is positioned, always position them so their eyes are looking into the larger space on your page. So have their back closer to the border and have their eyes looking into that larger area of the page. So there you go. That was the reason I chose to mirror Sophie's design and I am sure that's the reason that Sophie had structured her original design as she had as well. Okay, so I couldn't help myself here but add a little bit of frayed gauze for texture. I didn't add a lot. I just added a tiny little scrap, just enough so that there were some fibers peeking out from below the photo. And they were sort of running over the top of those fussy cut flowers. Now, just as Sophie had done, I had the fussy cut flowers spilling out from that tear in the paper and they sort of wind their way around the bottom of the photo and then up the edge of the photo. Now, obviously on Sophie's page, because her photo was positioned more to the left side of the page, her flowers wound up around the left side of her photo, but I've just mirrored that, as I said, so mine wind up around the right edge of my photo. Now, on Sophie's layout, on one of the pocket cards, she had the pocket card that had the, the painted stripes on it. And on those painted stripes, she had added phrase stickers from the accessory sticker sheet. So I wanted to stay true to her design and do the same thing. However, when I did hold the phrase stickers over the top of that black and white heart paper that I had used, I found that because I was going white on white and the, the print is obviously black, they were getting a little bit lost on there. So I decided to actually stick them down onto a little scrap of that pink paper and I just hand cut with a pair of scissors and cut around them just so they had that little thin pink border and all that did was help provide some separation between the sticker and the paper behind it and just helps those words pop a little bit more just to give it a bit of definition so where am i up to okay so i'm getting my phrase stickers down you can see that i've got that title card in the center there with the hello beautiful and the two butterflies now i know that for Sophie's layout, the way she, it was actually a photo of her daughter in the woods. So the way she positioned her butterflies was she had them positioned so that they were sort of flying out of the woods. So there was a reason, there was a reason the butterflies were positioned on the page. Now, given that my daughter was standing in front of a brick wall, there was no reason for butterflies to be standing, you know, flying out of a brick wall. And I did have that title card there that had the two butterflies. So using those two larger butterflies as an anchor point, I decided that was going to be the point and the reason from which these other butterflies were going to eventually, you know, spill out onto the page, fly out onto the page. Now, Sophie also had some journaling on her page, which is right where I have put those two painted stripe stickers. Now, they came from the clear sticker sheet and I did have a few sort of odds and sods left on that clear sticker sheet that needed to be used up. So I thought this was a great excuse given that they were nice long stripes and I could sort of place them just to represent those sort of horizontal journal strips that Sophie had had on her page.
I tucked in a couple of green leaves just to help freshen the color palette up a bit. It just needed that extra little pop of color. And I did put a wood button in my cluster alongside the photo there. Now that wood button was not from the Happiness Collection. It's actually from the Sun Kissed Collection. But when this collection was released, it did not have wood buttons included. It actually had flare buttons included. Um, but I did want to stay true to Sophie's design and include a wood button. So I just pulled one from the Sun Kissed Collection. And as you can see, it worked beautifully. Now, when it came to all of these butterflies, I had some that I had been fussy cut from the 12 by 12 paper, but I also fussy cut, you can see those little tiny, tiny ones. They came from the six by eight paper. So they're the same butterflies, but they're just scaled down a lot smaller because what I wanted to represent on the page here, and you'll watch me fiddle around with them because I'm very fussy when it comes to my butterflies. Um, what I wanted to represent on this on the page here, obviously, was, you know, I wanted a little bit of variety in size. I wanted a bit of a variety in color just to add some extra interest to that cluster of butterflies at the top there. Now, I wanted to pull that butterfly theme down through my page as well. So you can see I've added that indigo butterfly down near the bottom of the page. And I've also added one of the tiny little butterflies just onto my photo near that die cut banner that I added that says one of a kind so here I am I'm still fiddling with these butterflies now you'll note when I add these butterflies to the page that I have bent all the wings up now this is just to give a bit of dimension to the page but also by bending the wings up like that you give a sense of movement to your page and it just adds that bit of whimsy so there you go there's another look at Sophie's layout so you can see how I did and how I interpreted her design and I thank her so much for her ongoing beautiful inspiration. I love her work so much and I really hope that you think I did Sophie's page justice today. Um, now the only other thing I do add to this page because it just it wouldn't be a Sue layout without a little bit of mess would it? So I pulled out my Heidi Swap uh, Color Shine, just a navy one there, just to tie in with the blues. And I'm just adding some tiny splatters around the page. And that was it. Thank you so much for watching today. If you have any questions about anything I've done, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. While I have the chance, I just want to say a big shout out and thank you to everyone that's been supporting me because I have ticked over a thousand followers and I thank you all so, so much for that. I will see you in another video soon. Thank you for watching today. I appreciate you all. See you next time. Bye.